Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the BRICS PLC program control and the program control instructions will allow us to specify what parts of our logic gets solved and when this happens. Um, this will control how the PLC will scan and solve the logic in your program using synchronous PLC scanning. And what you'll see is I'm currently connected with my um, BRICS PLC through my uh, USB port and the USB ports located right here. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. We're going to be using um, TAS programs and subroutines and to demonstrate how we can split up our program. So the first one we'll do is look at uh, TAS. And TAS are small bits of program that you'll run periodically in your program. And they could be used for calculating uh, different aspects that, that don't have uh, it will say a time sensitive uh, function. And in order to um, develop a, or get a task, what you do is you go to your project browser and under tasks, you, what you do is right click and you'll see create uh, new block code. When we do that, automatically we have a task selected and now we can um, tell, type in a name. In our case here, you'll see that we've already created a task called count task and what you'll do is hit create. When we do that, um, we get then to a configuration. So let's just take a look at our count task configuration. And this is what it looks like. So what we can do is um, we can uh, tell exactly what we're going to do during this task. So what we'll see is our initial time splicing. And our time splicing just means that after 100 microseconds, the PLC will then give up control of that task. So that means that we can control kind of our, our scan time itself. So the program's going along. It, it encounters a task that we want to do. It goes into the task. If the task is taken longer than 100 microseconds, then what will happen is it will relinquish control back to the main scan to finish it off. Then during the next scan, it will go back and finish off this task that it, it failed to solve beforehand. That way our scan time does not get out of hand and, and uh, get too large. So let's hit uh, uh, OK to that or cancel. You can also see that we can actually do uh, code block protection right here too. So if we want to add a password to our, our programming code, we can do that at this point. You can also see that we can have memory retentive um, structures within our task and we can just um, click that if we want memory retention. So let's just cancel that. Now in order to call up the task itself, you'll see that I have my main program and I have um, a enable task instruction. And in the enable task instruction, um, we specify where we want, what task that we want to uh, call, which is in our case here, count task. We want it on the leading edge, um, or we can have it on the continuous on power flow. But we'll do leading edge, and we'll say OK. And then you'll see I have a one second uh, counter that's counting, and so at the leading edge of that one second, it's going to enable my count task. If I look at the task itself, we basically have a always on flag and the always on flag then does an increment on um, memory location V0. So, and then we have an end instruction indicating this is the end of my task. So our PLC currently is in program mode. Let's just put that in run mode. And when we do, you immediately see that we have V0 after every second is incrementing by one. So again, go back to our main task. So as that count happens, it goes into the enable task. The count task is then being performed. It goes into my uh, count task. It says, okay, increment by one, and it goes back then to the main and then carries on my, my program scan. So that is task. Now the next uh, one we want to take a look at is actual programs and we have an instruction here called run program that enables us to then call up uh, these 
these additional programs that we've made. And over here again, let's look back at our uh, project browser. And under programs, again, same idea. If we right click, hit create new code block, automatically program gets hit. And these are the programs um, or code that we run, that we put in there to run um, different parts of our program that we want. So we can take a, a machine, separate the different parts of that machine, and write separate code so that our code looks, uh, uh, it's easier to troubleshoot. And as, uh, uh, as a programmer, if you look at it, say, years later, it's easier to uh, read and understand exactly what's happening if we have these different sections. Also, documentation is very important. So just like the task, if we uh, right-click on our and on our program and we go to configure code block you'll actually see again we can do a time splice so we can say never yield so it's never going to yield it's always going to finish to the end which will affect our scan time we can say always yield at yielding instructions which are certain instructions like the um, uh, looping instructions that we um, have or we can yield we'll use the default yield at 100 microseconds so if it's taking longer than 100 microseconds, again, it doesn't affect the rest of the scan. It continues with the next scan. Now, if our program is scan critical, then we can say never yield. But it gives us that option. Also, under the program uh, block where we have a name. And then we um, can also add our block protection so that we can password protect again this section of our code so that no one can read it or uh, modify it unless they have a code. So we'll have say OK or cancel that. So you'll notice here on my run program I have my uh, first scan going into my run program. If I call this up it says uh, conveyor 1 and that's the only um, parameter we have under the run command. And my condition to that is my first scan flag. So once you've started running a program uh, and it starts running, it will continue to running unless you come to one of the other um, instructions, okay, which would be exit this program. So we can add this, this exit to uh, that to actually stop it or a halt command, halt program or task. In this case here, when we do, we actually stop that program and then we'll have to have a condition again to enable that program to, to operate. So because we, we set on the first scan, we're going to run this program, it continuously runs until it encounters one of those uh, parameters. So in my actual conveyor one routine, I actually have um, a simple start stop circuit. So let's just uh, force this on. And then we'll force this one on. Our output then turns on. I can then turn this uh, this one off, and our output still remains on. So you can see, even though I'm not in my main program, I'm not scanning anymore and saying run that program. It already remembers that that's what I wanted to do, and it will continue running that until um, I have I switch back into program mode or I lose power to the PLC. And when that happens, it comes back on again, it encounters the first scan, and then executes that run program again. So that is the run program. So I'm going to have several of these run programs and, and create um, separation and smaller logic code for each of my blocks. The next one we'll look at is subroutines. And subroutines are a very powerful instruction. What they will do is allow us to uh, create code that we can use several different spots with different parameters in our program itself. So if we have a common um, uh, piece of code that we want, but all we do is have different parameters that we need to execute on, that's exactly what a subroutine will do for us. So very powerful instruction. Again, in order to create a subroutine, you right click and then you can create the code block. When you do, it automatically selects a subroutine and then it basically uh, uh, will tell you a little bit uh, about what a subroutine is. Then if we um, look at the 
um, the configuration of that subroutine, well, you'll notice it looks a little different now. That's because the configuration of a subroutine, it will not allow you to do any yielding. So there's no time splicing at all. It must finish to the end with your call of the subroutine. Now the only thing we can also do is we can do the code block protection. So we can protect this piece of code with a password if we wish. Let's just cancel that. So you'll see that I'm monitoring right now and you can see that I got my main and my conveyor. Um, they're running all the time. My task, even though it's running and updating, you won't see it here uh, because it's only doing it uh, once on a scan per second, as you remember. So getting back to subroutines, here's my call to a subroutine. And my call actually allows me to input parameters. So in my parameters, I'm putting 45 into V1 and 25 into V2 in this particular call to that subroutine. And we want an edge trigger. Say OK. Then on this call, I have, I'm putting 100 into V1 and 25 into V2 for this call of the same subroutine. And again, I'm using the edge trigger. So if I look at the actual subroutine, I call it addition. So here I have a um, always on flag. It's one of our system bit flags. It will go into my math instruction. And my math instruction basically takes V1, adds it to V2, and stores it to V3. Then we have a return. And the return then goes back to our main program and continues on with the next scan, or continues with the, the scan immediately after where it was called. So let's, right now we have a program running and we're going to execute this uh, first contact bit so that we can call our subroutine. And when we do, 45 gets put into V1, 25 gets put into V2, and V3 then, when it executes our addition and our math instruction here, it will, should put the addition of that into V3. It gets returned and goes back to our main again. So let's try that. We will force the element. And sure enough, that's exactly what we do. You can see here, again, it went on the leading edge of that uh, instruction. So we have 45 here, plus 25, and we have a result of 70, which is exactly what we expected. Now, if we force our X3 condition here, we will call up the parameter again with different ones now. In this kind of time here, V1 is 100, V2 is 25. So here we have 100 and 25, add them together, we get 125. Notice that these parameters now stay. That's because when we called the subroutine, we called it on the leading edge, which is located right here. So we already said the leading edge. They, because we forced these bits on, they haven't come off that leading edge yet so that's why they haven't changed still so in order to change them I would actually have to then uh, cancel these out so unforce that and we'll unforce this one and then we can again change this uh, or force this element again and then we have a change and again, it goes back to the 4525 and our output 70 again. So these instructions actually come up and they allow us to segment and possibly in the subroutines in particularly, it will allow us to take common code to a multiple uh, different items that we're looking for during our program. Let's just unforce that element. Now the other thing we can do with uh, tasks and programs is we can change the order in which these things happen. So if we look at the main and we go down to change execution order, you will see that I have a list here, modify execution order. So this is when the program is running. In which sequence do we want to start first? We can start with a conveyor, we can start with the count task, we can start with the main. In order to do anything, you, you click on the item that you want and you hit move down or move up. 
So we can change any of these in whatever order we want to see them up here. So great flexibility with this uh, Bricks BLC and all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. Now if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.